Good evening. My name is Rosmin Ramchola, and I'm the executive director of the school. Let me start by first thanking you all for taking time from your busy schedules to attend this virtual open house. We are excited to share with you in this 21st century format. I'd like to give you a brief history of our school and I will try and be concise as we have a lot of information to share with you this evening. Unionville Montessori School was founded in the year 1987 as a small preschool program operating in the lower level of the church, St. Phillips on the Hill, where we still have some of our pre and junior Catholic programs. Yes. Now my involvement in the school began about 30 years ago, at which point there were roughly 20 to 25 students in two preschool classrooms, a half day class and a full day class. I taught in the half day class and my two children attended the full day class along with other students across the hall. Since then, the school enrollment doubled every year. And then finally in 1996, we outgrew the church location and the school expanded into its current location, which is the 4.5 acres at the Southwest corner of Kennedy Road and 16th Avenue. As our school grew, we undertook three major building projects. And now once again, for the past few years, UMS has been operating at almost full capacity. We have worked very hard to provide the Markham community with an option for a private education for their children at a reasonable cost. We are recognized as one of the reputable private elementary schools in Markham. And for many years now, our school community has been advocating for us to extend our program to include high school education for their children. So recently we acquired 28 acre property close to our current location that we are developing to house middle and high school students. This new state of the art facility is projected to open in September, 2022. Today we are very excited to share the details of the facility with you. And I'm certain that you'll find the information useful in making the right decision for your child. I would like to introduce you to our administrative team who would be presenting this evening. We have myself, I'm the executive director, the director of education, Shizin Ramtula, our elementary school principal, David Treherne, Patrick McCarthy, our high school principal, Aris Ramtula, who is the lead development manager for the Stovall campus, Kelly Gallisier, our head of resource, and last but not certainly not the least, Peggy Keller, our digital learning educator. I will now hand it over to our elementary school principal, Mr. Trahan, who will share some information about the transition of our middle school students to our new facility. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ramtula. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. I know that we have many different groups of people joining us tonight, so we may have some um, new parents to UMS, so welcome to our community. We hope that you get some information and uh, allow us to start the conversation about your children moving into our high school. I know that there are some grade eight parents here tonight whose children are graduating this year from UMS and are uh, looking at the possibility of bringing uh, their child to our high school. And then we also have a number of grade six and seven parents who are looking at um, what the transition will be like moving into the intermediate school at the new campus. Part of my job, of course, uh, in this transition will be to ensure that your children are feeling good about the move to the new campus, that you as parents feel secure that this is going to be an excellent experience for your children, and that the communication between our school on the elementary side and the middle school, high school, is very strong, both with myself, uh, Ms. Galsier and the resource department to ensure that any academic, social, emotional needs that your children have are met when they arrive on the first day of the, of the new year. I will acknowledge that I am very aware that the uh, news of us moving um, grade six and seven students came as somewhat of a shock, uh, that there are many emotions attached to that decision. Um, and I know that we need to work through some of that, obviously, um, with you uh, throughout this year. Um, I do feel over the last 19 months that I've been doing a lot of reassuring of people uh, in, in light of uh, the pandemic, uh, you know, that, that we're able to function, that we're going to be safe, that uh, your children will feel safe, and uh, that their academic life will uh, continue even under very stressful times. 
I hope that I will be able to provide some of that uh, reassurance uh, and play that role for parents and children making this move. That really is my primary role as Mr. McCarthy will be taking the lead as an, as the principal in the new environment. So keep in contact. It is the start of a long conversation that we're going to have tonight is just an overview, but we are going to obviously be communicating a lot. I hope that parents who know me um, are aware that I'm very accessible and willing to talk through any issues or challenges that you have. I will say before I pass this to Mr. McCarthy, because he really is gonna carry the bulk of the conversation along with ownership. I do think this is a positive change. I actually do. I think our school population was swelling to numbers that were making uh, some things challenging. Uh, space uh, being a huge part of that reality or the lack of at times. Uh, moving some of our students to the new school will provide them with an opportunity to have a lot more space, uh, not only for recesses, but for intramural sports, a regular size soccer field, tennis courts, a basketball court, a track, uh, more time to be able to access steam labs um, and, and spaces within the school to relax, to work um, and to enjoy an atmosphere that, that feels like they can uh, on some level, pick and choose where, where they can go when they have some downtime to study. Um, at, at our own school, the elementary side, I think it also opens up space for a dedicated music room, uh, a French room, a drama room, more, more access to the stage, which is now occupied by our music classes, more time for recesses outside and more space available for special events outside as well. So I do think there are some real benefits to this. Obviously, I'm not one to be speaking about the, all the academic pieces. That will be Mr. McCarthy's job coming up shortly. But I do think that focusing on smaller populations in both settings is a great benefit for all the children. I know the change is huge. I know it's dramatic. And I know it brings with it a lot of emotion. But I do think we're going to get to a place where it's actually seen as, as valuable for the student's education. So I will pass this and I welcome uh, the conversation as we move forward. So please get in touch with me. I will uh, introduce Mr. McCarthy, who is right now um, in India uh, as an administrator, and it is about 5.15 in the morning. So thank you, Mr. McCarthy, for getting up uh, before the crack of dawn to uh, join us tonight. Thank you very much, sir. And thank you everyone for joining us here tonight. At this point, I think I'm just going to introduce myself a little bit, or perhaps more appropriately, reintroduce myself. My name is Patrick McCarthy. I am not a rookie. I have been doing this for a considerable period of time, over 30 years as an educator. As mentioned, I have many years experience as a principal as well, both in Canada as well as overseas. Currently, I'm employed by an international school in uh, Pune, Maharashtra, India. I've also worked in China and in countries in the Middle East. I have worked in a number of schools. I've worked in IB schools. I've worked in AP schools. I've worked in IGCSE schools. So I'm very familiar with various curricula. I think also important for a project like this. I have been through it as a parent, as well as an educator. So I understand ex very, very well um, the concerns that, that many of you have, having lived them myself. I'm not going to take too much time right now, and I will be rejoining the conversation to, to talk through various aspects of high school, particularly high school as it applies in Ontario. Thank you, everyone who has been so kind and, and welcoming me. I did mention rejoining the school. Some of you may remember I was actually the principal of UMS for two years in 2015 and 2016. So once again, I am no stranger to the territory. So I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Ariz Remtola, who's going to take you through the new property and the exciting plans that we have. Thank you, Patrick. Good evening, parents. My name is Aries Ramtula, and I've been working to develop and design our Stouffville campus. In this meeting, I want to share the exterior amenities and layout we are creating for our students in Stouffville. But before we get to that, I want to share with you uh, some details of the property and the reasons why the school invested in this location. 
So the location, uh, as you may have heard, is at Stouffville and Kennedy Road. It's approximately eight minutes drive from our existing campus. We are creating a shuttle service for parents who have multiple children and want one drop-off location. I'll take you through this video we've prepared, which details our site and the interior details and renders will be shared with you after this presentation. So our new name, Univo College, and this is the newly renovated 1800 square foot building. As you can see, there's a drop-off area and two entrances, one to the east and one to the west of the site onto Stouffville Road. We're expecting an efficient, safe, and quick drop-off and part. There's dedicated areas at the space for outdoor education. As you can see on the back rear of the property, we have space for a regulation size soccer, tennis, and basketball courts, as well as an outdoor track. We truly feel at this property, there's room to grow with the amount of land on site. Again, 28 acres. Towards the rear of the property, there's also a gym. This is a dedicated indoor space for the physical education classes, approximately 4,000 square feet. This is where they will play basketball, tennis, etc. On the property, we also have a building that's been renovated to host office space. This is where the majority of our staff offices will be located, as well as dedicated spaces for one-on-one -on -one learning and support. Our principal's office and IT office will be located in the main building for easy access. There's also outdoor spaces such as the creek, forest, and trails throughout the property where students will be able to observe natural wildlife and conduct different educational learning activities. So to recap the highlights, the distance from our existing campus is about an eight minute drive. There will be a shuttle service. There's 28 acres of land. We're gonna be having regulation sized sports fields, soccer field, tennis court, and basketball track uh, around the property. And there's many of outdoor education opportunities. So if I can turn it over to Shazen, we'll go over the interior renders and the interior spaces on the site. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ms. Ramtula, and I'm the Director of Education at Unionville Montessori School and Unionville College. So I'm just going to give you a quick walkthrough of the interior of the building. On the left here, you can see the entrance where the drop-off loop is. And once you enter through the double set of doors, there will be a big foyer space where we will place some seating as well for students to relax in, parents to wait, in the foyer. And then at the top on the left, there is a lunchroom and a cafeteria, which will be for our staff and students. Our students will be able to bring their own lunches or purchase from our on-site cafeteria for breakfast, lunch, and snacks at recess time. Down at the bottom, there is a drama and music room and drama and music productions. Although we'll have drama and music classes here, our drama and music productions will take place in the UMS Auditorium in Unionville. We also, to the north of that drama and music room, there is a STEAM lab where there'll be plenty of space and equipment to engage students in our STEAM-based activities, emphasizing hands-on learning through building and engineering. Just north of that, you can see the art room, which will be a space designated for students to create using various mediums of art. To the right, there is the science lab, which will be equipped with middle and high school grade science equipment, which will allow students to engage in science-based experiments when they're ready to do so in a safe manner. You can see that the lab is at the back portion and the classroom is in the front area. There also is our classroom spaces. There's multiple classroom spaces throughout. And then at the very east end, we have our library where it will have a quiet space for students to work with flexible seating options before school, during lunch breaks, after school, and eventually if they have any spares, they'll be able to go to that space. We also have a design studio where students will be able to create using a variety of technologies at their fingertips. Finally, going back to where the entrance is, there's the principal's office and there's a couple of other offices there as well. 
So all other staff offices will be in the building adjacent. And as Mr. Remtula mentioned, there will also be a resource space there for students who are accessing resource in a designated area. So here are some conceptual renderings we've put together of what the spaces will look like. So this one is of the STEAM lab. You can see that there are flexible seating options, some additional devices that we will place in the classroom for students to use, robotics equipment as well. And all uh, students who are entering in grade nine will get a laptop, which will be a good transition from the Chromebooks that they have in our seven and eight. Here is a rendering of the science lab. As I mentioned, the seats, if you look at the picture on the bottom left, the classroom space with the seating is at the south end and then at the north end is the, the lab space. Plenty of storage for science equipment and it has everything that a middle and high school program requires for the science program. Here's a rendering of the gymnasium space. It's a big area and children will be able to play a variety of sports in the gymnasium. And this is the library space. So as you can see, there's lots of flexible seating, plenty of space for books as well, and for students to come and work in. And this is a rendering of the design studio. We will have high-speed computers for children to do things like graphic design, AI programs, and so on. And here's a rendering of the art room space. Plenty of space for the kids to do art projects and spaces for them to display their art as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be with you for the next little while because I wish to cover a few things. First of all, I think that it's important that since we're talking about high school, we understand some of the key terminology. I know that the Ontario high school system is probably new for many of you, so you can understand at least generally what you and your children are getting yourselves into going forward over the next few years. Then I want to talk a little bit more specifically about our plans at Unionville College. I hope that I can share with you my enthusiasm and my excitement um, because this is going to be a tremendous, tremendous opportunity for the young people that, uh, that are in our charge. So to begin, in high school in the province of Ontario, we talk about credits and we talk about courses. A course is simply a 110-hour program of study in one subject. So I think the first thing that we need to understand is we are getting away from the idea of core teachers and specialist teachers. It doesn't really work that way in grade nine. Everyone is a specialist teacher. And all courses are the same length. So physical and health education, grade nine is 110 hours. Math, grade nine is 110 hours. They all result in credits being granted upon the successful completion of the course. So a math credit and a phys ed credit, they all count as one. In terms of the levels of the courses in Ontario, these are designated in grades nine and 10 as academic, applied, or open. And when the students reach grade 11, they're designated as university, college, or workplace. Essentially, this has to do with the destination that the children have in mind when they're registering for the course. So academic, and university courses are essentially university prep courses. Applied or college courses lead to community college and other courses um, that might be designated as workplace are for students who don't intend to carry on education beyond high school. All of the courses that we will offer at Unionville College are university prep courses. So the destination will be academic or university, or in some cases, an open course that is required, um, but nonetheless leads to university entrance. We talk about compulsory courses and elective courses. In the province of Ontario, there are some courses that everyone must take. So for example, grade nine, French, 
It is not an option. Everyone must take grade nine French. Everyone must take grade nine mathematics. As a matter of fact, everyone must take math until at least grade 11. When the students get older, there are more elective courses that they can choose. And these are courses that are of special interest to the student or which lead to a particular university destination. There are prerequisite courses, and I'm sure you're familiar with this, the idea that you have to pass one course in order to take the next course. So I cannot take any grade nine students and put them in grade 11 accounting. There are prerequisites which must be taken before a student can take that course. You have to take grade nine math before you can take grade 10 math. I'm, I'm sure you get the idea. And finally, um, an OSSD or an Ontario Secondary Schools Diploma, that is what we are all looking to attain, hopefully with very, very high results so that we can go to university. At our school in grades nine and 10, the students will have compulsory academic level grade nine and 10 courses with a few open and or elective courses. And we'll go through those in a little bit more detail later. By the time they get to grade 11 and 12, it will be university prep, or there are some what they call um, M courses or university slash college preparation courses. But again, they lead to their university study. Basically, what we want to ensure is that everything that the students need to enter the university program of their choice will be offered. Pro what students need depends on the program and depends on the school they're applying to. So, for example, if a student decides that he or she wishes to be an engineer, they must take grade 12 English because everyone must take grade 12 English. They also must take advanced functions. They must take calculus. They make, must take chemistry and they must take physics. So there's five courses at the grade 12 U level, which they have to take. In order to take those courses, they have to take the courses in grade 11. So they have to take grade 11 functions. They have to take grade 11 chemistry. They have to take grade 11 physics and so on. Again, at the university level. So the students really, by the time they're in grade 10 in particular, need to start thinking and need to start planning to take the appropriate courses. We will provide guidance in this area, and we will also ensure that whether a student wants to go into medicine or engineering or law or education, depending on what they want to do, whatever course of university study they choose, they will be able to do so. For grade nine, this is what we're looking at for next fall. The students will take grade nine academic English. They will take mathematics. Now there is a choice here because I understand that some students are already doing MTH 1W, which is the new de-streamed grade nine mathematics course, and they're taking that for credit. Well, we're not going to make them repeat a credit that they have already successfully done. So those students will have the opportunity to do MPM 2D, which is grade 10 academic math. All students must do academic science. They must do academic French. For the most part, they must do academic uh, geography. All students in grade nine must have a physical and health education course. They must have an arts course. And so we will do some combination of visual art, drama, or, and or music. We are looking at offering Introduction to Computer Studies, which is actually a grade 10 course, but it should be ideal for our students. This is a programming course and will be very, very helpful for the students, regardless of what field they choose. And students will also have the opportunity for a learning strategies course. This course deals with things like time management, with study skills, with knowing oneself as a learner and, and that type of thing. It can be used in some cases as a course that will replace French if the student is eligible for an exemption in French. 
Now that's a very, I suppose, rather more sophisticated concept. Being exempt from French doesn't mean you don't want to take French. Okay, there, there are criteria that have to be met. And I will talk to parents for whom that may apply. So in order to get an Ontario high school diploma, one must complete 30 credits. Of those 30 credits, 18 of them are compulsory. That means uh, the students have to do them and 12 are elective. Generally speaking, the route is eight credits in grade nine, eight in grade 10, eight in grade 11, and then six, seven, or eight in grade 12. There are advantages for doing more than 30 credits. The biggest one pertains to university admission. I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Students must also complete a literacy requirement. There is a test called the OSSLT that is offered in 10th grade, and students will have their first opportunity to write it then. Hopefully they pass it, in which case they have met the requirement. If they do not, they need to either retake the test or there is a course which they can take, an additional course, to meet that literacy requirement. Finally, students are required to do community service, and it's a minimum of 40 hours, and they can begin that once they begin their high school careers. Now, speaking of university, I know that might seem far away for some of you, but the time does go quickly. Just a brief overview, because this is um, a complex topic. When students are applying in the province of Ontario for universities in Ontario, it is a centralized process. All of the students grade 11 and 12 marks go to a place called the Ontario Universities Application Centre, and it is essentially the means by which students can apply to all of the Ontario universities and the various programs. How do you get in? Well, the universities set their own policies in Ontario as they they do outside of Ontario. If a student wishes to apply outside of Ontario, they have to apply directly to the institution. You can't do that through OUAC. Generally speaking, at an absolute minimum, um, in order to be accepted into a university anywhere, Students require an Ontario high school diploma. They must have grade 12 English plus at least five other grade 12 university destination courses. So that's the the U courses I was talking about. Now, an average grade in these courses at a bare minimum needs to be in the mid 70s. If you are looking at more competitive programs, particularly if you're looking at universities closer to the GTA, then you're looking at um, an average probably in the mid 80s. In some cases, the high 80s or even low 90s. It, you know, it depends. And, you know, there is not one number, which is the, the magic number, because again, it depends on the program. It depends on the university. And it also depends on more than numbers, because in more and more cases, the universities will require the completion of a supplementary application. What that is, is essentially a resume that the students submit, and it lists all of the extracurriculars they have participated in, any clubs they've been in, any sports teams they've played on. It lists the community service that they have done. It asks for references. For some programs, it may require a portfolio. And this is getting more and more weight every year. There was a conference I was at a couple of years ago, and I was listening to the Dean of Business at Queen's University. And essentially, their policy now is they have a minimum average, which is, I think, 85, 86% that the students need to meet. But after that, it really doesn't matter what the grades are. 
So 85 is treated exactly the same way as 95. That's enough to move to the next stage. Then they go to the supplementary application because I think university programs and certainly employers are looking for people who are more than just academics. They have to have these other aspects. And this is why a small school like ours, one of the reasons a small school like ours is going to be so advantageous for the, for the students. In any event, we will talk more about that and I can answer questions about that as, uh, as required. So at our school, our approach is going to be certainly emphasizing academic excellence with high standards for teaching and learning. We're going to do that through small classes and by having specialized seasoned faculty that are dedicated to the students and the school. I like that word seasoned, so much nicer than old. Um, anyway, we have people who know what they are doing. We have people who have who know the students, who have a good understanding of what they need to achieve. And because this, many of the students will be coming from an elementary program where they are working above level already, one would expect that they're going to be able to achieve very, very highly in the secondary program but we're gonna continue that approach. I think the kids will still, generally speaking, get very, very high achievement, but we do not want to just take it easy on them in high school. We want to continue that approach, continue to, to push them without penalizing them in terms of their marks, but continue um, to have them achieve above and beyond so that when they, get to grade 12, they're able to achieve the high grades, they're able to get into the universities of their choice, and beyond getting in, when they get there, they're going to be successful. And that is so, so important because in many cases, particularly for students who attend public schools in this province, they're not ready. And the dropout rate in Ontario universities particularly in programs like health sciences, in engineering, in business. I mean, the dropout rate is very high. We don't want our students to be in that situation, and they won't be. We want to have an environment where students and faculty can develop and pursue their unique passions and interests. They're going to have an opportunity to find the things that they like and to participate in them a wide array of academic, artistic, community service, and athletic programs. This is important. Remember, I was talking about the supplemental application. At our school, the students who wish to be in DECA can be in DECA. If they wish to be in MUN, they can do that. If they want to be on the basketball team, they will have a good opportunity of being able to participate in the basketball team. It's very different in a high school of 2,000 students where only a, a small elite can participate in these types of activities. We will have an open communication with parents and an open door policy, which allows for effective collaboration and an active student voice where the students feel empowered to speak and to solve problems. It's their school, and they're going to be able to have a say in how things work. They're going to be able to have a say in the approach. We want to listen to students and listen to families and individualize the program as much as possible, far more than is possible in a comprehensive public high school. And by doing that, by listening and by tailoring our approach, we're going to be able to do our best to ensure success for these students. So as I mentioned, we will continue to exceed Ontario Ministry of Education requirements, emphasizing critical thinking and abstract learning. The elective courses that we're looking at offering next year, well, 
There will be an arts course, which is technically an elective, although students do have to do an arts course. And as I mentioned, it'll be a combination of music, drama, and visual arts. There will be the computer studies course and learning strats. Beyond that, we're looking at business courses, sciences, math, computer science, everything that they will need for university admission wherever they want to go. I mentioned the Math Reach Ahead credit. We are going to continue to offer that, and this will be advantageous for students because they will be then given the opportunity to enroll in grade 10 math. This really helps high-achieving math students, particularly those who want to do programs which require multiple grade 12 math credits. So, for example, if one does grade 10 math while in grade 9, and then grade 11 math and grade 10, you can do one of the three grade 12 math credits in grade 11. Advanced functions is probably the one to do. And then in grade 12, they can do grade 12 calculus, perhaps even grade 12 data management. So they can spread those courses out. Those are the ones which are required for university admission. They can spread those out over time rather than trying to do them all at the same time, which can be difficult. Other ways that we're going to be setting students up for success include guidance and career education. We're going to encourage and help the students learn about career opportunities and to make informed decisions. As it gets closer to the time, have a college counselor, a guidance counselor on staff. In the meantime, I mean, we will still provide guidance through teacher advisor programs. And as I mentioned, I'm, I'm not new to this. So I'm certainly able to work with the students in, in that regard and to talk to families in that regard as well. But there will be a general focus on educational, interpersonal, and career development throughout secondary education. This opportunity to be in a school like ours is tremendous. And it is going to be so good for the kids. I know there is some apprehension about making a move, and rightly so. But having been around adolescents for most of my adult life, I can tell you that kids this age, they need some space. And they want that. They need that. It's a time when they are trying to take ownership of their lives when they're trying to determine who they are and what they want to be. And to be in an environment which supports this is far and away the best possible decision you can make for them, in my humble opinion. In any event, we are talking about student success. So I think it's appropriate now, I'll turn it over to Ms. Galassier, who will talk about the Student Success Center. Thank you very much, Mr. McCarthy. Good evening. My name is Kelly Galassier. For those of you who don't know me, I've been a teacher in the Unionville Montessori family of schools for the past 20 years. And in fact, both of my children are currently attending UMS in the elementary school program. I am a professionally certified NILD educational therapist, and I serve as head of the resource department. I'm very pleased to be with you this evening to introduce you to the Unionville College Student Success Center. As an extension of Unionville Montessori Private School, Unionville College will continue to create educational programs that both challenge and support the needs of its learners. As Mr. McCarthy said, our goal is simple, to ensure that every student receives the instruction they require to maximize the progress that's consistent with their ability. The Student Success Center team will be comprised of OCT and TESOL certified instructors who have additional qualifications in working with students with learning differences. We'll provide accommodations and individualized programs of support to meet students' specific learning needs in a variety of areas, including oral reading and comprehension, written expression, and mathematics. Private speech and language therapy, as well as NILD educational therapy and English language development programming will also be available to qualifying students at an additional cost. The Student Success Center team will participate in regular and ongoing professional development in order to stay up to date with current research and best practices in education. Through consultation with other professionals like speech language pathologists, audiologists, and psychologists, the Student Success Center team will create and guide teachers in the implementation of individualized student learning plans, accommodations, and program modifications as needed. 
For more information about Unionville College's Student Success Center, please contact me in the resource department at Unionville Montessori Private School. I look forward to speaking with you personally to discuss your child's individual learning profile. At this time, I'd like to now turn the presentation back over to Ms. Ramtula to discuss extracurriculars and enrichment opportunities. Thank you, Ms. Gelsier. So at Unionville College, we will have two different types of extracurricular programs. Those of you that are joining us from UMass, our grade six and seven parents, you'll be familiar with this part mm -hmm. of the presentation. Our first after-school activities are the enrichments, which are free to all of our grade four to nines. Students will be given the chance to participate in at least one enrichment throughout the school year, and our enrichments are taught by our teachers in three different sessions of eight-week blocks. Some of the enrichments will include MMUN, First Lego League, Green School Eco Club, Student Council, Forensic Science, DECA, etc. These enrichments will give students an opportunity to participate in activities that they are passionate about. As well, these enrichments will give our students the opportunity to take on leadership roles within our school and the community. For example, our MMUN enrichment, Model Montessori United Nations, takes place over the entire school year. Our students will be delegates for an assigned country and will have to research a given topic. So for example, one of the topics this past year is protection of global climate for future generations. So our students will learn about cultures, governments, and peoples of nations throughout the world. And then through the process of role playing, each student will get the opportunity to write, present, and debate issues affecting their nation and peoples of the world. By assuming the character of a citizen of their selected country, they will fully develop an understanding of the needs of the people and the importance of accepting differences. During the process, they will understand the need for peace and conflict resolution throughout the world while developing their own conflict resolution and debating skills. The enrichment will include the grade eight students traveling to New York City in February for the conference where they meet students from all over the world to present and debate their assigned topic over several days. The students will also be given the chance to visit the UN to present the resolutions. We also offer paid after-school programs, and these programs include robotics, chess, abacus, yoga, ballet, rhythmic gymnastics, just to name a few. All of our students may take part in these programs for a nominal fee, and these paid programs would be offered three times a year, just like our enrichments, in the fall, winter, and spring, at lunchtime, and at after school between 3.30 to 6. Most of our programs run for eight weeks. And towards the end of the school year, children that have signed up for something like ballet or rhythmic gymnastics will get the opportunity to participate in our auditorium at the Unionville campus. Class sizes for each of the, our programs would range from eight to 15 students, allowing children to enjoy participating in the activities in a more personalized setting. So these programs are a combination of fun and academic-based extracurricular activities. I'd like to now introduce Ms. Peggy Keeler to speak about our technology program. Thank you, Ms. Ramtula. I'm excited to share with you all about our tech program that we have at Unionville College. My role here is a digital learning educator. Let me tell you a little bit about what that role is. The digital learning educator role has become more commonplace amongst balanced technology and advanced curriculum private schools. We are, and I am, a Google certified trainer and a Microsoft innovator educator. I'm also proud when I represent UMS as a delegate and a member in the ISTE, which is the International Standards of Technology and Education Conferences. I'm also an active member in Toronto areas for EdTech Innovation Groups. So all of this leads to Unionville College. We are really committed to offering a superior tech educational experience that is sensitive to the needs of each student, enhances learning, and equip students for modern life. The essential role of educational technology at Unionville College is to enhance student learning. When technology serves to enhance the attainment of learning expectations, it is highly encouraged, readily available, fully supported and integrated into our programs. 
We are proud to provide brand new balanced technology enriched environments. That includes a design lab and a STEAM and robotics classroom. Our modern digital learning environments are supported in the classroom with smart boards and a one-to-one -one laptop program for every student. The laptop program allows for access and use of innovative software such as AutoCAD, AR and VR platforms, digital resource textbooks, and Adobe Creative Suite licenses for every student. Being a one-to-one -one laptop school also allows our students to use their critical thinking skills, their collaborative designs, their creativity to develop and show their understandings of the concept that they are learning in class. We will have various enrichment activities our students can be involved in throughout the year. The first will be the Microsoft Imagine Cup Junior, an artificial intelligence competition, an hour of code, hacker gals, and laser and 3D printing design. With students having their own Microsoft laptop and access to the advanced digital software and platforms that we have, extended learning takes place in the classroom and students make a connection with others in a modern learning environment. So just speaking a little bit about the mission requirements for our grade nine program, all of our grade eight students, all of our students who are currently attending UMS will not be required to conduct an assessment for entry. Any external applicants will be required to fill out the online application, followed by an academic assessment and personal interview. The application process is open for external families, and you can apply online at admissions.univomontessori.com. For our existing families, uh, you will get the opportunity during re-registration time in February to register for our grade nine program. So just some frequently asked questions that were submitted prior to the open house. For our grade nine program, class sizes will be a bit smaller. And so the class size would be 18 to 20 students. What does leadership look like at UMS? So there will be shared opportunities for leaderships for our grade seven to nines. Our grade nines will have the opportunity to continue leadership as the oldest students in the school. And as Mr. McCarthy mentioned, as a smaller school, students will get more opportunities to lead. I am an existing UMS parent. When do I have to confirm my grade eight child's registration to grade nine? Again, your child's re-registration would be confirmed by February 2022. How far is the Stovall campus? Our Stovall location is located at 3844 Stovall Road which is the northeast corner of Kennedy and Stovall Road, and it's approximately eight to 10 minutes from our existing Unionville campus. What will the fees look like for grade nine? So our fee schedule for the 2022-2023 school year is not yet released. It will be released in February, and it will likely be a three to 5% increase from our current grade eight tuition. An approximate 16.5K in tuition and technology fees would be an additional on top of this for the, the laptop devices. How will students who have siblings at the Unionville campus get to Stouffville? So our Stouffville campus again is an eight to 10 minute drive north of our Unionville campus on Kennedy Road. And we will be offering a shuttle service in the morning and potentially also after school if there is enough interest for any families that have siblings attending our Unionville campus. If the Unionville location is more convenient for families, we will do our best to accommodate just the one drop off at the Unionville campus and students will be shuttled in the morning there and back uh, after school. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming to our virtual open house. If you had some questions that weren't answered, please feel free to reach out to us. We hope to see you soon.